superior fighter, landing more blows, throwing more blows, and generally dominating the action against Holyfield. Holyfield reversed the tempo in round six, took advantage of a cut over Stewart's eye, which had resulted from a second round headbutt, and progressively opened the cut to the point where the bout was stopped in round number eight. means that here comes Mike Tyson. It's a tribute to Tyson, incidentally, that despite what happened in Tokyo, he has filled this building with about 16,000 people. Aren't many fighters out there who can do that? Certainly no non-champions. Indeed, Mike will tell you in no uncertain terms that he's still the main man in the heavyweight division where ticket sales are concerned. He suggests that Neither Holyfield nor Foreman, and certainly not Razor Ruddock, could ever dream of selling as many tickets or as many pay-per-view subscriptions for a fight as can he. Well, he's Mike likely Tyson. to be proven wrong on that when Holyfield does fight Foreman. But suffice to say, he is still a major attraction. Ringside seats here, incidentally, are just $400, a fraction of what they've been in the past for him. There are some consequences to losing. Tyson's last fight, two minutes and 47 seconds against Henry Tillman, the man who had beaten him twice back in the amateur ranks. In that mob surrounding Mike are all three of the trainers now enlisted in Team Tyson. Aaron Snowell, Richie Giacchetti, whom you'll remember from his long tour of duty with Larry Holmes, and Jay Bright. The three of them nestle just behind the fighter as they make their way toward the ring. Looks like a T-formation with a flanker, Jim. That's right. Mike's playing quarterback. Aaron and Richie are the halfbacks, and Jay Bright is dropping back as a fullback into a sort of short punt formation at this point. Now Mike will emerge into the ring where most of the crowd will get its first look at it. What he's wearing is a torn towel. And there you see the record. 38 wins, the one loss to Douglas in Tokyo. This is the 40th bout of Tyson's professional career. His knockout percentage with 34 KOs is high, but not the highest in the history of the sport. And there goes Angela. Tyson looks a little fitter. I like Mike Tyson when he, when he looks small when he looks like a big middleweight or a light heavyweight. So let's take a look at the tail of the tape. And you can see that the big disparity there is in height. Stewart four inches taller than his opponent. He has an eight inch reach advantage. Tyson at 217 and three quarters looks to most observers here to be splendidly trained in terrific shape. And the punch that numbers. There you see what Tyson did against Douglas. But look what Stewart did against Holyfield. 81 punches around, an amazing number of punches for a heavyweight. Rules for the bout, New Jersey's rules. Three judges scoring the fight, 10-point must system. Standing eight count in effect. Three knockdown rule in effect. Neither fighter can be saved by the bell. So right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Don King Productions in association with the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, present the featured bout of the evening. In attendance here at ringside tonight, ladies and gentlemen, our host, a man who's brought 50 championship bouts to Atlantic City in the last four years, Mr. Donald J. Trump. And in the ring at this time, the promoter for tonight's great event and many others through the years around the world, Mr. Don King. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. All the officials shall remain the same except the judges assigned at ringside. For this bout, they are John Stewart, Rocky Castellani, and Eugene Grant. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Ten rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. The referee for this bout is Frank 
Cappuccino. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim. He weighed in at an even 218 pounds. He's originally from England, but now lives and fights out of Brooklyn, New York. His professional record, an unbelievable one, 26 victories, all 26 by knockout, only one defeat. He's the number four ranked heavyweight in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex the Destroyer Stewart. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks, weighing 217 and three quarter pounds from Catskill, New York. Also an unbelievable record, 38 victories. 34 by KO, only one defeat. He's the number one ranked heavyweight in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Good evening, gentlemen. We're both giving your instructions by the New Jersey Control Board. Protect yourself at all times. Like you, Both your touch gloves. Come on, come on. Come on, baby. That's come right, on. baby. The come question, on, as in all Tyson fights, can the opponent maintain his poise in the face of Tyson's quickness and menace? Or will he retreat stay in the corner, Alex. into self-defense? Stay, stay in the corner, Michael. Stewart okay. has stated categorically that he knows he needs to keep throwing punches to try to keep Tyson occupied. If he stops throwing, he'll be dead. Tyson lands a right and another. This could be quick. I was afraid of a 30-second sound bite. All right, man. Okay, let's go. Remember, Stewart never went down against Evander Holyfield. A shot to the body, another solid right hand. Stewart begins to throw as a means of trying to defend himself. That'll be called a slip. And Mike is a little wild as he goes for the kill. A good right hand that hurts Stewart again, but Stewart is still upright. a flush right hand. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's up just at the count of nine, Jim. How you feel, man? Taking a good you look at Cappuccino. He's going to let him go. Three knockdown rule is in effect. If Stewart goes down again, it's over. And Stewart has quit throwing punches. You can see how wobbly his legs are. He makes it through a minute and 20. It'll be a small miracle. Let him go, let him go, come on. Stop punching. That was a worthwhile grab. <laughs> Tyson missed with a left that would have done it. He's very calculating now, Tyson. Two more right hands land. Stewart must land something or else it's just a question of a few seconds. That'll do it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, They're forgetting that the three eight. knockdown rule is in effect. This fight is over. Well, Stewart said that Tyson was a mountain he had to climb. He just got knocked off that mountain. He just didn't have the style, Jim, unlike Douglas, to test the vulnerability of Tyson. Yeah, he's not nearly the technician that Douglas was when Douglas was good. In yeah, Tokyo. early in the fight, Douglas tied Tyson up. He used his jab. He survived and then let and, and determined the pace of the fight. Nothing about him. All right, you stay right there for a minute. Let me take a look here. In the early part, the first fight, first punch. 
You know how many times you got knocked down? Three times. Three times. The first time, right? Yeah. You remember the first one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, do you think you can stand up now? Yeah. Just stand up for me. Put your feet together as you stand up. Put your feet together. Right. Lay on me as though. No, I'm just holding you to see if you don't fall down. Put your feet together. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Okay, let him go. And here's the first of the three knockdowns. You look at Tyson moving in with controlled fury, and the right hand puts Stewart down. Stewart was able to get up at the count of five. Now we'll take a look. Is this the first knockdown again? Yes, it is. Another angle. The winner. The right hand to the top of the head was the one that put Alex down. That knockdown occurred within the first 10 seconds of the round. Now we'll take a look at knockdown number two. By this time, Stewart still wobbly from the first knockdown, and he went down without Mike having to land a crushing blow. Another look at knockdown number two. And you can see that the right hand simply glanced off the top of Stewart's head, but it was enough to put down a very wobbly fighter at that point. And now here's a third look at that same knockdown, knockdown number two. The left to set it up, the glancing right off the top of the head. And Stewart down for the second time in the round. Still more than a minute 40 seconds remained in the round at that point. And with the three knockdown rule in effect, it was up to Stewart to try to stay on his feet to make it through round number one. He was not able to do it. Here's knockdown number three, which came at two minutes, 27 seconds of the first round. A right and a left, and that was enough for Alex Stewart. Referee Frank Cappuccino began the count, which was academic at that point because of the three knockdown rule. Another look at the third knockdown, solid left to the side of the head, but by that time it was the accumulation of punishment throughout the round, which contributed to Stewart's demise. So Mike Tyson, in his three fights in this particular ring, his last three fights, I should say, in this particular ring, has a 91 second knockout, a 93 second knockout, and this one, 147 seconds. Three first down knockouts in his last three appearances here in Atlantic City for Tyson. Punch stat statistics for the one round in the fight. Tyson threw 46 and landed 21. Stewart given credit for having landed four punches. He stopped punching somewhere early in the second minute of the round and simply tried to survive from that point on with the by now obvious result. So this crowd remains on its feet. Almost everyone still here in the arena as they await the official announcement. And we wait to see if we'll, well, they've gotten the official announcement. I was looking at replays and I'm told now that the official announcement has already been made by Michael Buffer. And we wait now to see if we'll get a chance to talk with Mike Tyson about this, the 39th victory of his professional career. And here comes Mike Tyson to join us now at ringside. Congratulations on victory number 39. You came out with fury, to say the least. Knocked him down in the first 10 seconds of the round. If I can get you to turn toward the camera a little bit, Mike. How important was it to you to score a first round knockout tonight? Well, I mean, I knew he was a dangerous fighter once he got warmed up. And my objective, I was in great shape. He was to go in there and put the pressure on him for 10 rounds. I knew I had to break him eventually. You appear to be in sensational condition. Do you feel considerably differently now than was the case 10 months ago in Tokyo? 
Absolutely, because our mind is more prepared. You know, I mean, that's what basically the whole standpoint came down to, is being uh, prepared mentally. How does your situation compare now to what most people would regard as the peak of your career when you knock Spinks out here in 91 seconds? Well, you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't feel like it was a sustained shoot of night tonight because there are things that I know that I did that was mistakes. So, you know what I mean? A good fight, and I'm in good shape. And I just like to thank all my fans on HBO that's been supporting me. But I just like to say this is my last fight on HBO. It's because HBO, they think that you'd rather see Holyfield than me. Thank you for supporting me. I love you all. But Mike, one final question. How important at this moment is the coming arbitration with regard to the WBC championship and the possible WBC title fight with Ruddick? Well, it really don't matter, as long as I can fight for the title. I, I, love, I love to fight Ruddick. I want to show everybody he's not the baddest man in the world they once said he is. Would you rather fight the winner of Foreman Holyfield? Excuse me? Would you rather fight the winner of Foreman Holyfield? I would fight anyone, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for the moment. It looks like Ruddick might be in the, in the wings, and I'm looking forward to fighting Ruddick. Can you elaborate on why you feel you've been treated unfairly by this network, which will state that it has two offers on the table for you for long-term deals? I have no comment. I don't want to talk about no. The, the, the company know what they did, and I'd like to say hello to all my troops again that have been supporting me. I'm out of here. We've enjoyed covering you. Thank you very much. We don't negotiate on the air. Our chief executive, Seth Abraham, will have plenty to say in the future about the potential for another Mike Tyson deal at HBO. It has been our hope for the past year that we could complete one more deal to give a long-term contract to Mike Tyson and to continue, his cover, or to continue to cover his fights here on HBO. But there'll be no negotiation on the air. That will take place between Don King and Seth Abraham. We're grateful that Mike was willing tonight to come and speak to us at ringside in the midst of what is, quite candidly, a frosty period between us and him and his promoter, Don King. So Mike Tyson has the 39th victory of his career, the 19th.